Gandhi was everywhere, interested in everything. All action was a search for truth. There was grain to be ground. And Muriel Lester of Kingsley Hall, where he had stayed in London, joined in the grinding. These villages, said Gandhi, cannot retain freedom if they do not control the prime necessaries of life. All India was Gandhi's house, all that lived his blood kin. He traveled all over to the northwest frontier, center of the most warlike Patans, and wherever he went, the people came to see him. There were the Sikhs whose temple this is on the border of the frontier. And he talked with Abdul Ghaffa Khan, called the Frontier Gandhi, tall as a leader, who had converted the most warlike to followers of Gandhi's nonviolence. And none followed Gandhi more truly than Abdul Ghaffa Khan. Gandhi still walked everywhere. He was always busy asking questions, comparing experiences. Every man had a truth of his own, a whole of truth could be learned. Everywhere he received gifts of cardi, homespun cloth. For still spinning was among the first of his village industries, not only the very symbol of passive resistance, but a means of meditation. As long as the peasants spin, he said, they have their self-respect and the measure of independence. This was Gandhi's meditation in action. <laughs> And spinning bound India together. In the simplest village, in the house of the leaders, all were spinning, as in his house, Nehru. The act alone, not so important as the symbol that all in the nation could spin. The nation was one. Gandhi spoke of this in his usual simple fashion. The answer is simple and obvious. We have nearly 700,000 villages. A large number of these villages are living in a condition of semi-starvation. And they do so because they have no employment for nearly six months in the year, that is, during off-season. That being the case, it is necessary to find some supplementary occupation for them. It is obvious that we must therefore give them an occupation to which they have been used. Children too could spin. 
As to their childhood, said Gandhi, if parents behaved themselves while the child was growing, the child would instinctively obey the law of truth and the law of love. The true education of the intellect, he felt, should be around a dominant interest, a craft, the culture of the heart and hand, not just the head. Education of the body and the five senses was the best and quickest way of developing the intellect. But mind and body must go with the awakening of the soul, or the mind and body would be a lopsided affair. He attended the local scout meetings held nearby, as intent as at a Congress meeting. More and more training schools for teachers were being opened and India moved toward freedom. But now at the Congress meetings, its leaders were facing new violence in India, new violence in the world. World War II was coming, and Gandhi was being forced back into politics, his experiments with moral force once again to be political experiments. He left the ashram. The Congress party had become a state within a state. These leaders won the elections and were representative of the new India. There was Rajagopalachari, Madras, Kher of Bombay, Pant of the United Provinces, Shukla of the Central Provinces, Sinha of Bihar, Dr. Khan Saheb of the Northwest Frontier, Madam Pandit, the first woman minister in India, and Desai. By 1938, there was unrest in the Congress. Munich was coming, and England was threatened with world war. The leaders talked of what this would mean to India's drive toward freedom. Gandhi still pointed out the principles, the means must be good, or the ends would be meaningless. Ends and means must be consistent. India must win only by the highest means. Let's not repeat history's mistakes, he said. Let's make new history. And on March 2nd at Rajkot, for such a principle, he went on another of his famous fasts. Fasting against the breaking of a pact. Nehru announced the fast a success. The charges of Mahatma Gandhi against the Pakistan. All political prisoners in that court have been released and the, and the original settlement and the original settlement the right there between the Hassan Sahab and Sardar Vallabhai Patel will be given effect to. In case any future disputes that might arise on And a crowd listening had come to understand Gandhi's fast. What could a man offer more valuable than his life? Fasting was then the last resort in the place of the sword. The sword breeds hate. Self-suffering revitalizes the good and the wrongdoer rather than the evil. But only if used for good, never as blackmail. The working committee now came more and more to water. The war would come. Was India to follow Gandhi in non-violence? There were differences in the Congress. Bose, walking behind Gandhi, was crying out, give me blood and I promise you freedom. So Bose spoke. Our struggle is no doubt a non-violent struggle. But even a non-violent struggle demands an army, an organization, and a machinery. The questions were, if war comes, if England was at war, could India be forced to give soldiers army bases? The working committee was against all attempts to impose war on India. Gandhi in all these meetings, all during the war, insisted, I do not want England to be defeated, humiliated. And so he told the Viceroy, whom he saw several times, freedom of property.